Hey there everybody and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to walk through the basics of using checkboxes in AppGyver. Now, I do have a much longer video where I'm actually going to walk through how to make this productivity app. I'll drop a link to that in the description below, but I just wanted to give you the basics of how to use checkboxes for now. Now, before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. So jumping straight in, another resource I'll put in the description is this video here. This is not a channel or a person I'm affiliated with, but it is a good resource for the checkboxes as well. And again, additionally, another resource in the description for this productivity app. So when you're in AppGyver, we'll just jump straight in and essentially look at the components view on the left hand side. And you'll notice you have a checkbox field. And then if you scroll down, you can go into primitives and you'll see that you also have just a standard checkbox. So they have similar logic in that you'll see you have this true and disabled option and um, there's a little bit more customization, but you should be able to click on this and click on the checkboxes and adjust styling and things of that nature. And you can double click out. This option here just appears to have a little bit more um, you know, basically just more things that you can change. However, at this point, we have learned that you can use rows to effectively bring over and you could drop a checkbox on one side and some text on the other. So you can set this up however you want. Now, if you want to learn more about AppGyver, check out my channel. I have tons of tutorials and resources. But again, just keeping this video short, if we click on the checkbox, you'll see you have your label here. So this is where you would just type in the title. We could just put in test. The value you'll see is whether it's true or false. So starting out, what's it going to be? Checked or not? And then disabled is true or false. This gives you the option to essentially gray out the checkbox. So what I'll do is I'll keep this one true and I'll keep disabled true as well. And we'll click save. And I just wanna show you what it looks like. So when we go to see my list, you'll see Disabled means you can't do anything with it. And because we set it to true, it essentially was checked. But now if we set that to false, you'll see it's still grayed out, but it's unchecked. So again, the value of true or false is what means it's checked or not. And then if we were to set the disabled to false, now when we go to this page, you'll see we can select or deselect. So what we're doing is we're toggling the value of true, false. You can also choose additional values here. I've been struggling to set it up to where you can have the true, false value stored to data storage, but this is effectively your option to say, mark this as complete, for example. So I'll show you the basics of what I have set up in my application here, which is this productivity app. So if we were to set up, let's just type in first, and then we'll go to second, and then we will type in third. And we're going to save each. And I won't walk through how I actually set this up, but I want you to see how these work. So on the next page, the label is a data variable. Again, you can look at the full video if you want to see more. The value is set to false because I want a user to be able to check this to say, I have done this activity. Disabled is false because I want them to be able to use it. And then when we select the checkbox and click show logic, what I'm doing is when the component is changed. So what I mean by that is when the box is changed from check unchecked to checked, at least in this case, because on page load, it's unchecked. So when the components changed, I want to update this record and basically change the word first to just be a space. So it looks like I've completed it. So I'll show you what that looks like. <clears throat> Let's just say this is our to-do list for the day. I did my third thing first. So I click that. After about a second, you'll see the values removed, and I had a little toast dialog. And not only that, but now I have a little check mark. Now if I were to click second, I get a little toast dialog, and you'll see that's right here. And then the values deleted. But now I decided, you know what, it's time to close the application. I have some other stuff to do. And in the AppGyver preview app, if I'm not mistaken, when you back out all the way to the home screen, it's the same thing as closing the application or similar to it. So if I go back to the productivity app and just click open and I click see my list, you'll see my first to do item is still here. So then I could just click done. And now I have officially cleared out my to do list for the day. 
Now it looks like these values are stored just in that page. So if I select it and I leave and then I go back, there's nothing there. So it you can play around with the values themselves. But that's the basics of how to have a checkbox effectively change or alter a record. You could use on component change, you could set an app variable, set a page variable, set a data variable. As you can see, there are tons of options. And if you wanted to, you could even drop in a confirm dialog to say, are you sure you want to do this? So as you can see, all of these flow functions here for the most part could be added in to create a more complex flow here. But that's the basics of using a checkbox in an application and really just using it on a single page so the values aren't stored elsewhere. So I hope that was enough to get you started. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.